y'all doing? You're like, you already asked that question. No, this is a new me. <laughs> I did a wardrobe change. Hey, everybody. I'm so thankful that you guys are all here. Um, Pastor Sean is taking a Sunday off. He will be back next week. So Pastor Sean, we're praying for you. We love you. And uh, thank you for the opportunity that um, I have this morning to deliver the message. So, um, so excited, kind of nervous, because you already know if you've never actually spoken, you get to see like Hundreds of eyes looking at you, and it kind of gets you, right? So um, many of you already know how I am, and that is I'm very just me. I like to be real. Um, I love participation. So guys, say, who? All right, that's good. You're, hey, you're, you're helping them out today. They needed support, right? <laughs> guys, say, who? <laughs> Ladies, say, hey. hey. Right, see, there you go, there you go. Um, I just love, the reason I love that is because it, it kind of makes me know you're awake and I didn't put you to sleep, right? Um, the other thing is, for those of you who already know, I'm a huge Disney freak, so trust me, somewhere along the line there's a reference to a Disney movie, right? And I'm a movie buff and I, I'll just say it, I'm in love with God, right? I'm in love with God, amen? So over the next, I'll, I'll, I'll be talking for about an hour and a half. Just kidding, just kidding. Just wanted to see what your reaction. 8.30, some people went, oh, right? No. Um, for the next 34 minutes, hey, I just want to be able to speak real with each and every one of you. Would you allow me to be real with you guys? Yes. Okay, I want you guys to be real with me, right? So if, if I say something that you agree with, don't, don't be afraid to shout out a yes or, a, 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 you know, just clap for the Lord, amen? Um, but if there's anything that you, uh, that you disagree with, uh, take it up with G-O-D, right? Just chill, just chill. Anyways, um, it's a privilege to be able to share. God's been talking to me. Um, for the last few weeks, we've been talking about um, Paul in, Phil in, 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 in the Philippians, right? In the book of the Philippians. And pastor's done an amazing job of describing everything that, that Paul's been experiencing there. And this week, as I was reading the, uh, what the Lord was uh, pressing on my heart, it's like I was living just seeing Paul um, writing this letter, right? And it came alive inside of me in such a powerful way. And when I read chapter three, the very first lines, how many people have ever done any type of boxing, MMA, or anything like that? Okay, right, oh, right on, lots of you. How many have ever had the wind knocked out of you, right? Okay, right? So that's exactly what happened he knocked the wind out of me, just with the first lines, literally. And I want to share, and I want to be as real as I can with you, because, you know, God, sometimes he checks really hard, right? And it's, he does that because he loves each and every one of us. It's kind of like me as an MMA instructor. If I hit one of my students, if I only give him a little love tap, I'm actually not do, I'm doing a disservice to that student because he's never going to toughen up. But when I hit hard, they learn a lesson, right? So God does the exact same thing with us. Sometimes he's going to check really hard and we squirm, but it's kind of like a dad looking at, looking at us and saying, I'm doing this because I love you, right? So today, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share with you what God put on my heart. And I hope it checks you. I hope it blesses you. I hope it checks you. And then I also hope that he uplifts you. Amen? 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 
And that's about 10%. Amen? Amen? Right on. Hey, can we do something a little different this morning? Anybody like to do things differently? Yes. All right on. Let's all rise for the reading of the word. Amen? This morning? In respect to the word of God, I'd like everyone to please rise. And open your Bibles to Philippians chapter 3, please. If you have the MSG, KGV, AB, ABC, whatever version Bible you got, just follow along, all right? Some of you are going to be going, I don't see that in my Bible because you got a different version than mine, right? Anyways, Philippians chapter 3. When you have it, say amen. amen. The word of God says this. Paul speaking in Philippians is writing and he says, whatever happens, my dear brothers and sisters, everyone say rejoice in the Lord. I want you, if you have a highlighter, if you got a pen, I want you to write, underline, highlight, whatever you want to do, that line, rejoice in the Lord. Remember when I said he hit me hard with the very first line? That was it. That's crucial. That's powerful. Rejoice in the Lord. I never get tired of telling you these things, and I do it to safeguard your faith. Everyone say, watch out. Okay, some of you kind of like, eh, watch out. Say it like this, watch out. Watch okay, out. watch out for those dogs. Those people who do evil. Those mutilators who say you must be circumcised to be safe. For we who worship, everyone say worship. worship. By the spirit of God are the ones who are truly circumcised. We rely on what Christ Jesus has done for us. We put no confidence in human effort. Though I could have confidence in my own effort if anyone could. Indeed, if others have reason for confidence in their own efforts, I have even more. I was circumcised when I was eight days old. I am pure-blooded citizen of Israel and a member of the tribe of Benjamin, a real Hebrew if there ever was one. This guy's like talk, like he's throwing down right now. Like he's right now saying, he's giving you his resume, right? Um, I lost my place. I was a member of the Pharisees who demanded the strictest obedience to the Jewish law. I was so zealous that I harshly persecuted the church. And as for the righteousness, I obeyed the law without fault. I once thought these things were valuable, but now I consider them, everyone say, worthless. Because of what Christ has done. Yes. Everything else is worthless when compared with the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for his sake, I have discarded everything else, counting it all as garbage, so I could gain Christ and become one with him. I no longer count my own righteousness through obeying the law. Rather, I become righteous through faith in Christ, for God's ways make us right with himself depends on faith. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you right now for what you are about to do. We thank you for what is about to be spoken, not by me, but by your Holy Spirit. Father, from side to side, back to front, top to bottom, and even those that are on, watching online right now, may your Holy Spirit move in our lives. The atmosphere is changing because the spirit of the Lord is in this place. And we agree, we touch in agreement, we confirm it, we receive it, we acknowledge your sovereignty, and we declare you are God. In Jesus' precious name, and everyone said? Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Look at the person next to you and say, I'm so happy to be here. So happy to be here. Amen. 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 Be glad in Christ. That hit me so hard. We were driving yesterday, my wife and I, we were driving to a belated Thanksgiving feast with my family. And guys, don't you just love it when all of a sudden that little check engine light turns on? Right? It, it, it stops your world. Because you're thinking, oh no, did I do the oil change? Oh no, is there, is there, water, is there water in the radiator? Oh my gosh, is this going on? And you start panicking. 
panicking. You're going, what's happening? This is going to cost $1,500. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Right? And your world turns upside down. So that's exactly what happened yesterday as we were driving. We're getting ready to go and boom, the light turns on. Bum, bum, bum. Right? And I went, oh no. And it's amazing how a small yellow light can stop your joy. It can, right? Thank God it was just the gas cap was loose and that was it. But God's going, you dummy. <laughs> you, thought it was, you thought it was all this stuff, but it was just your gas cap is loose. That's what happens with our day-to-day -day life. That's what happens with each and every one. How many of us have experienced something that has killed our joy just like that? Many of us, right? You could be driving to church today. Car right in front of you going way too slow, right? You're honking the horn. You're flashing the lights. Person like brake checks you, right? And you're like, oh, heck no. You get, you're in your little Prius. You're like trying to pass them up, right? Or you're in your big old truck, right? And you're getting ready to go. And you go, hi, Sister Doris, how you doing? And you like hit the brakes and you like go right behind them, right? Things like that happen, right? Right? It always happens. If, one out, if anybody in this room says, I have never done that, mm, I got to pray for you. Because at some point in your walk, some point in your life, you have lost your joy. Right? Some, so to be glad in Jesus, to be glad in God, it shouldn't be a circumstantial thing. It shouldn't be something that is determined by what's happening in your life. You should be glad all the time. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will declare this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be made glad in it. Amen? Amen? What's the opposite of glad? Well, wow, that actually rhymed. I wasn't even aiming for that one. <laughs> the opposite of to be glad is to be sad, to have sorrow. Here's some things that could happen in our lives that will change our glad from sad. Circumstances beyond our control. <laughs> Check engine light, right? Stressful situations, a stressful situation at work, stressful situations regarding your family, a betrayal, drama, right? A betrayal. Your best friend betrayed you. All of a sudden you read on Facebook that they like said something bad about you and it's horrible, right? A spouse's betrayal. A loss of someone. Health issues. Finances, especially around Christmas time, right? It gets stressful. But to be glad is to feel joy. Is to feel the pleasure of being happy, of being glad, to be pleased. When we have the, the gladness of God in us, it's because we are glad about the good news. What's the good news? The gospel. Christ came, he died, he resurrected, and let's see, let's see if I got a better reaction this service than last service. And he wants to spend forever with you. Right? He wants, he, he loves me so much. He loves you so much. He wants to spend forever with you. Some people are going, he wants to spend forever with me. Does he really, really know me? Right? I'm like a handful, right? And God's going, yeah, I know I made you, but I still love you. And I definitely want to spend forever with you. Amen? Amen. Sorrow is defined as feeling of deep distress. It's a loss, it's a disappointment, it's misfortunes that we have suffered either due to our own efforts and our own actions or because of others. And many of us in this room have experienced that. I'm not going to be, I don't want this sermon to be one of these positive mental attitude type of sermons. I want to be real with you. Because just as an MMA instructor, I have to check my students. Just as 
just as we, as iron sharpens iron, needs to check each other, I want today for you guys to realize what I'm trying to get to and what the Holy Spirit spoke to me and how he's wanting for each and every one of us to understand. So that when you walk out, you're going to go, that hurt, but I got it. Right? Paul's in his jail. Paul is under house arrest. The dude's looking out of, a, out of a window going, I remember walking those streets. I remember smelling just grabbing a flower and enjoying it, but now I'm under house arrest. You know who had a really, really hard job? Was that Roman soldier. And you know why? Because if someone had to use the bathroom, he was walking there with him, right? That's kind of hot. That's kind of tough, right? But anyways, the fact of the matter is this. Even while he was in how, under house arrest, what were the letters? What was he talking? What was he saying? Brothers and sisters, be happy. It's so easy to be happy when everything's going right. It's when all of a sudden that check engine light turns on and that's when you have to realize, I need to rejoice and I still need to be glad why? Why could we say that? What is empowering you and I to say we should rejoice and be glad in God? Do me a favor, go to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, we're going to read verse 35, verse 37, and verse 38. And when I read each and every one of these uh, words, I want you with an emphatic powerful, 100% participation, I want to hear you all say no, okay? Kind of like that James Earl Jones, Simba, no, right? Powerful, right? So when you got it, say amen. amen. Romans 8, 35 says, who shall separate us from the love of God? No. No. Right? <laughs> Trouble? No. Let's try that again. Trouble? No. Hardship? No. Persecution? Famine, no. poverty, no. danger, no. sword. No. no. In fact, the next, the next word on verse 37, he says, no. In all things, we are more than what? Conquerors through him who loved us. Everyone say conquerors. conquerors. Look at the person next to you and say, I'm a conqueror. I'm a conqueror. Come on, come on. Conqueror. Let me hear you say that, come on. You got to believe it. There you go. For I am convinced, listen to this, listen to this. Like the dude literally, like he covered everything with this next statement, with this next verse. For I am convinced, neither death, life, angels, demons, present, future, powers, height, depth, nothing created will ever separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. You have a reason to be glad? It's because of this. Nothing will separate you from the love of God. Amen? So it doesn't matter if that check engine light turns on. It doesn't matter if in life your check engine light of life turns on. Nothing will separate you from the love of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. No matter your circumstances, fill this in you can still share Jesus to others. Let me read that again. No matter your circumstances, you can still share Jesus to others. Why? Jesus is not bound to your circumstance. He's not. He's not tied into it. Yes, is he walking with you through your circumstance, through the challenges, through absolutely everything that you're going through? Absolutely. But your circumstances should not stop you from sharing the power of God and what he's done. Let me ask you a question with a show of hands. How many have seen the power of God work in their lives? Raise your hand. Amen. Look around. Keep your hands up. Look around. And if you don't have your hand up, guess what? You're breathing this morning. That's the word. That's the power of God. Pastor Folio about a year ago said something. You can put your hands up. Pastor Folio said something powerful about a year ago. If you don't have a testimony each and every week, a new testimony, you better get yourself checked out. 
Because the word of God says that his mercies are new each and every day. That means the moment you wake up, the moment that your eyes are wide awake, his mercies are new. The moment that you open your eyes, God's doing something powerful in your life. The moment that you're doing something, taking a step, driving to work, hey, you got work, you got blessed, right? Come on, praise him. You need to walk through this life. This isn't a PMA. This isn't positive mental attitude. This is biblical attitude. Walk through this world going, it doesn't matter the circumstances because I firmly believe that death, nothing, death, life, angels, present, past, definitely not the past, future, whatever, nothing's going to separate me from God. You better walk out of these doors this morning knowing that nothing will separate you from God's love. Look at the person next to you and say, nothing separating me from my God. Nothing you can do can take me away from my God. Everyone say, my God, right? Yes, I quoted Sister Act, right? Oh, it's amazing. I will follow him. Okay, all right, anyways. How many saw Lost in Space? When you, danger Will Robinson's, danger, right? The next verses is a danger Will Robinson from Paul. He's telling each and every one of us, be careful and be aware, be alert. He says, beware of those dogs. Write this in, they're all bark, no bite. Have you ever seen those small little dogs? Like chihuahuas, right? And all you hear is, right? That's it, right? They're as it's like God blessed them with the most loud vocal cords you could ever. It's like, the, like their little lungs are like those big, huge amplifiers, right? So they could be like right there next to you and you're like, oh, right? But their bite barely even scratches the surface of your skin. Here he's talking about those religious, and I'm going to use this word, please forgive me, religious freaks. People that are pushing religion rather than relationship. Sometimes in life, here comes the hook, the cross, the, 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 the check. Sometimes we have done that in our walk because we forget that it's not about ritual. It's not about works. It's about a one-on-one -on -one relationship with God. And we have to be careful we always have to be careful, be alert, because all of a sudden you're gonna have these people that are saying, no, it's because of this, and it's because of that, and the only way you're gonna make it to heaven is because of this, and the only way if you're gonna make it to heaven is because if you get baptized, or, 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 or if you this, and, and God's going, wait, 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 wait. No, it's about my son. It's about knowing my son. It's about me knowing you. It's about you knowing me. A good, a, a, a a phenomenal friend of mine. He shared something powerful. And he said this. I was praying to God. And I said, God, I'm, I, I just, I, I, I'm praying to hear you. I want to hear you. And God said, you don't get it. I'm talking to you every day. You just need to start praying to listen to me. Right? God's always wanting to talk to us. God is always wanting to have a relationship, but are you listening? Look at the person next to you and say, can you hear me? Are you listening to God? If you've ever encountered someone who's pushing religion, if you're ever encountering someone who is a legalistic person, run, Forrest, run. Okay? Run! Matthew 7, 21 through 23. Write this in your notes. Jesus talking, he says, not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven. Verse 22, many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, didn't we preach? Didn't we cast out demons? Didn't we do powerful works all in your name? Then I will look at them and I will say, get away I never knew you. Here comes the check. You ready? Can I be real with you? Yes. May I? Yes. Stop playing church. 
Stop making it about you coming through these doors. Oh, hallelujah, and I'm done. It's not about Sunday morning. Because you know what? Many people in this room, and I'm going to drop a huge bomb. I'm going to drop a huge bomb. Some of you right now are playing church, and you're not going to heaven. It's not about you coming into this building. It's about you having the knowledge and knowing Jesus Christ. Paul says it here, everything that I once thought I was, because he was all that and a bag of chips, okay? It's, I count it all as lost for the blessing of knowing Christ Jesus. Amen? When you walk through these doors and you think you're punching a time clock, God's looking at you going, when are you ever going to get it right? Amen. Many think that coming into Sunday morning service, I don't like the songs they do. What made you think it's anything about you? <laughs> well, I like, I like the new songs. Great, we do them. I like the hymns. We do them. I like this. Well, I like this. It's not about you. It's about God. Amen? When you hear the sermon, well, I didn't like how Pastor James spoke. Take it up with G-O-D. Take it up with him. It's many of you, many of us have fallen, and I'm putting myself in that place. Many of us have fallen in that trap that we think it's about us. Worship starts the moment that your eyes open. Worship starts the moment that, you're, that you, you, your knees touch the ground and it better be the first thing in the morning, right? When before you walk out the door, Lord, dress me in your armor because I know I'm going into battle, right? It's about just surrendering yourself to the Lord so that when all of a sudden come Sunday morning, 10.30 in the morning, you got, now I got to say this right here. Some of y'all coming in way too late, <laughs> Okay. Okay? We should be so excited to show up 10, 15 minutes early. Why? Do you know why? So that way you can start sharing about the awesome things God has done in your life throughout the week. So that when it's time to celebrate, when it's time to worship, whether you do like the song or whether you don't like the song, your spirit is in line with God and you're going, nothing's going to stop me from worshiping because my God has been working in my life and I'm here to give him praise. Give him praise right now. The danger in the church is this. Here's the danger. Many of us are following that thought process that we think it's about a ritual. We think it's about a routine. You wake up at a certain time, oh, got to pray. Some of you have an alarm on your phone saying, read your Bible. Put an alarm on your phone. Don't forget to breathe. That's how important it is. You should already be like, I can't wait, whether it's on an app or whether it's in, you know, original form, scroll, you know, whatever, you're going, I can't wait to hear from you. I can't wait to know you. I can't wait to hear all the good things that you have in store for my life. But before you tell me what you're going to give me, God, I'm going to hit my knees on the deck and I'm going to give you praise and glory because I love you. Amen. Amen. Be careful that we don't fall in that thought process. Like I said, I'm going to hit hard because God checked me. Do you know what it's like to cry? Do you know what it's like when you hear God's voice and he's looking at you and he's going, it's not a routine. If you only talk to your wife once a month, you in trouble. If you only talk to God once a month, you are in serious trouble. If you are only wanting to hear from God when it's convenient, watch out. When you are wanting to hear from God every single day because your spirit needs it. All you want to do is hear from God. You're going, God, I don't care what's going on. I don't care what this, that, here. Netflix can wait. I don't care what show, whether it's The Walking Dead or your favorite movie. You're going, I don't care. Because nothing's going to come between me and knowing God and talking to him. Don't 
get in a ritual, amen? Cinderella story. I told you, Disney movie's gonna get plugged in somewhere, right? 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 When Cinderella was creating her dress, she grabbed everything that she could find. You know, she had the little mices and all that, you know, goose, goose, right? All those people were there helping out creating the dress, right? And it was a beautiful dress. It really was, right? And those beautiful sisters that she had tore it to smithereens, right? And she was left in rags, right? And then here comes the fairy godmother, and all of a sudden she does everything that she does and creates this gorgeous dress, right? I mean, Disney did a really good job of that. Even on a cartoon, you went, wow, that's actually nice, right? I know, guys, y'all, we all checked out. Follow along this, just follow along on this one, right? You guys are going to get done with the dress situation, right? But what happens is this. When all of a sudden, the fairy godmother starts singing the whole bippity boppity boop and creating all these other things, she makes this dress. Cinderella says something and she says, thank you. It's more than I've ever hoped for. I'm not, I'm not saying God's our fairy god god. No, right? He's God. And how does this relate to us? It doesn't matter what you try to do. The clothes of righteousness that we try to put on because of our works are filthy rags before the Lord. In Isaiah, write the scripture down. In Isaiah 64, 6. I want you to, to just take that home. It says that we stand before him in, uh, 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 with our filthy rags. So if you want, just go really quick to Isaiah. I really want to read this, and I know time is ticking away. You guys give me five more minutes? Yeah. Amen, okay. I'm probably going to ask for five more minutes in about five minutes. Okay. Go to Isaiah 64. verse 6, it says, we are all infected and impure with sin. When we display our righteous deeds, they are nothing but filthy rags. We can dress ourselves in the entire attire that we think of all of our works. We can say, God, I prayed like this every single day. I could say, Lord, I played the piano and I led worship like this every single day. I did this, I did that, I preached, I, I, I sang, I, I, whatever it was. And I could imagine just God saying, put that against the work of my son on the cross. And now let's talk. If you always try to come before God and thinking that you all that in a bag of chips, that you're all this because you pray 15 times a day or you're, and you're doing it because you, you think it's works, you just got your reward. You know what that means? You got a good habit and that's it. You miss the entire picture. You miss the entire point. God's righteousness, he wants us to be clothed in his Righteousness, Amen? He wants you to come before him and literally say, everything that I am, everything that I've done, it means nothing. It's just all you. And it's because of the work of your son on that cross, Father, that I can come before you and surrender my life and look at you and talk to you and speak to you and be before you. Amen? 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 So, God's righteousness is more than we could ever imagine or hope for. Isaiah 61.10, write that in your, in, your, in your notes. I will rejoice greatly in the Lord. My soul will exult in my God. For he, everyone say he, he. has clothed me with his garments of salvation. He has wrapped me with a robe of righteousness. How many have messed up in life? Everybody. You know what God does? He grabs your sin. 
and he throws it away. And he says, I don't ever want to remember that anymore. I don't want you to ever remember that. I want to heal you. I want to work in your life. And everything that I want to do is I want to clothe you in garments of salvation. And I want to, I want to wrap my robe of righteousness and drape you with it. That's the God who loves you and who loves me. Amen? Amen. Come on, give him praise. Give him praise. I will work as fast as I can to end this. When Paul is talking and he's giving his resume, the dude literally was throwing down. Like he was right there going, you think you guys have a lot to boast about? Let me tell you who I am. And what was powerful is when he said, I observed the law without fault. That's how the dude was. But yet through it all, going back to Philippians, what was amazing is that everything that he accomplished, everything that he had done prior to having a knowledge of Jesus Christ, he said, I consider it garbage. Let's go back to Philippians. And I will be wrapping up in just a couple of minutes. Is God talking to you this morning? Amen. Amen. This is what he said. Yes, everything else is worthless. Actually, let me go back a little more. I once thought these things were valuable, but now I consider them worthless because of what Christ has done. Yes, everything else is worthless when compared with the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have discarded everything else, counting it all as garbage. Some of your Bibles say rubbish. So that I could gain Christ and become one with him, I no longer count on my own righteousness through obeying the law. Rather, I become righteous through faith in Christ. Many of, us live, think, many of us live our lives thinking our Christian resume means something. Many of us live our lives thinking that our Christian resume means something. Many in this room, many in this room think that you're more than what you think you are. Like I said, I'm going to check hard. Why? Because God checked me. You're not. The only one that is all that and a bag of chips, like the saying says, is Jesus Christ. And that's it. Amen? Amen. Paul said if there's anyone who thinks that they're all that, he gave his resume. Compared to Christ, everything is garbage. Compared to everything that we do is garbage if you put it against the work that Jesus did on the cross. Everything. Everything. So stop thinking it's about your work. Stop thinking about, about uh, 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 it's a ritual. It's about knowing. Listen to the power and the passion that Paul says here. Yes, everything else is worthless when you compare it to the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. I'm going to check you today, and I'm going to end with this. Do you know God? I want you to write that question on your outline today. Do I truly know God? Is the value of knowing God much more than everything else? See, because it's really easy when Paul said, I count it all as loss. It's really easy when we say, I counted it all as lost. Because that's in the past. It's only in the moments when, when that comes into the present tense, where every little thing that happens in your walk, everything that you do, you say, I count it all as loss for the value of knowing Christ Jesus. Do you know Christ this morning? With every head bowed this morning and every eye closed, I, don't, I, I pray no one moves right now. And we're going to do something a little different for 1030 service. 
with every head bow and every eye closed. If you have not come to know Jesus Christ and you are yearning to really truly know him and you're getting and, and you're done playing church, you're done making church a routine, you're done making it a ritual, you want it to be a relationship, a true relationship with Jesus Christ. If that's you this morning, I'm going to ask you to do something bold right now. I'm going to ask you to stand up. If this morning you're saying, I'm done playing church, I'm done making it a ritual, just stand up. Because you're counting, you're saying, God, this is about you and my relationship this morning. With every head bow and every eye closed. If you have not this morning said, Jesus, come into my life. I want you to be my Lord and Savior. I beg you this morning, before you walk out these doors, for you to commend and to commit your life to Christ and say, Jesus, I'm all yours. Right now, I hear you talking to me and speaking to me, and that's my cue to have you be my God. If that's you this morning, just stand up and just say, I'm ready. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for those that are standing because they want to know the fullness of you. They want to know Jesus Christ. To know that it's no longer about a, relation, about a, a ritual, a religion, it's a relationship. Father, right now we ask that everyone who is standing up understand that everything else is garbage but the true value is in the infinite knowledge of knowing you and your heart. It's not about experiencing you. It's about knowing you. It's not about feeling you. It's about knowing how you love us. So this morning, Father, I just want to say thank you so much for those that boldly professed and said, it's me. And for those that silently in their heart they're saying, God, it's me. I just couldn't stand up. I still say, and we still pray, Father, right now, please, in their life, in their walk, become so real that they can't wait to hear you and get to know you. Thank you, Father, for this day. We love you. We give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. In Jesus' precious name, everyone said amen. amen. Come on, give them praise. In the next few moments, you're going to have prayer partners coming up, and they're going to be giving you a next, a next step packet. Before you leave, do me a favor. Hold, talk to them. Let them know. They want, they, want, they want to help you. Notice what I'm saying. They want to help you with your relationship with, with, uh, with Christ and in your walk. So don't leave without having someone speak with you in detail because we, we're not going to let you just go and that's it. No, we're going to walk with you. We're going to talk with you. And if you rose your hand this morning and you said, Jesus, I want you to come into my life, please text this, Jesus next at 555-888. And there's going to there's gonna be a pastor giving you a call um, today because we just want to talk with you and speak with you. If you, if you committed your life to Christ this morning in your programs, there's that connection card. We want to know that you surrendered your life. We want to know that you dedicated your life to Christ. We want to be able to pray with you. So this morning, just write that in. I dedicated, I rededicated my life to Christ or I made a decision X, Y, Z. And this morning, before you leave, stop by the guest center. Turn that in. We want to pray for you. We want to just... Uh, yeah, I've been talking too much. I'm sorry. My, my, my tongue is kind of tired right now. I, right? Anyways, so that's it. That's it. Nothing more than that. Who's going out to lunch after this? Huh? All right, cool. Right on. <laughs> Change the subject. Let's all rise and let's close this out in prayer, man. Let's see if, let's see if I still got your attention. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Amen. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for everything that you do in our lives. As we leave this place, Father, we thank you for, for, for spending time with us and for us spending time with you. 
We get to walk out of this place with a bounce in our step, knowing Jesus. And Father, may we share that same excitement to all those who are out there that need hope and they need to know Jesus Christ. May we reflect your love to a world that's out there. Thank you for everything. We love you. We give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor in Jesus' precious name. And everyone said, amen. Amen. Peace out, everybody. Have a great week. Love you guys.